Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue on with exercise 3D of the book Fundamental Applied Mathematics. We're on page 87, and the question is number 2. It reads, from a point P on a plane inclined at tan inverse a half to the horizontal, a particle is projected with speed U at 30 degrees to the plane. The motion takes place in a vertical plane through a line of greatest slope up the plane from P. Find the tan of the angle with which the particle meets the plane at landing. Now, that is a very difficult way of stating a very simple question. The question is basically, fire a particle up a plane and find the angle at which it hits the, uh, hit, hits the plane again. That's the quick way of doing it. And that's the reason I've drawn the diagram in front of you. So if you've seen other videos, for example, any of the ones in exercise 3C, you will see that diagram loads of times. So the only difference here, uh, we're given by the way alpha, it's tan inverse a half, I just didn't want to write it in. So the only difference is we need to find the angle with which the particle hits the plane. Alright? Like so. Now how do we do this? This is, you need to think about this a small bit. So if that's the final velocity vector v, then if we resolve this vector into its component unit vectors, so into the x prime, y prime plane. So if we go, I'll draw it at a slightly larger angle just so we can see it. So if we go parallel to the y, and then parallel to the x. So we're going to have this and this. This is going to be v sub x, this is going to be v sub y. And we're going to have an angle. But we're actually going to have two, well, three angles, of course. I'm going to call, well, with this angle here, I'm going to draw one line, and we're going to have another angle here. Draw that with two lines, and our 90 degree angle. All right, so what we need to do here is work out this angle, which will give us this angle because, of course, if we have a right triangle. Now, the only difference between the x prime plane wrong axis and the x axis is the angle alpha. So, whatever angle something hits the x prime axis, it is alpha degrees greater than it would hit the x axis. So, all we need to do is use some trigonometry up here with our take we'll say the tan go v sub x or v sub y inverse tan that to get this take it away from 180 plus 90 to get this and add alpha degrees onto it or excuse me yeah add alpha degrees onto it take alpha degrees off it excuse me and we'll get the uh, we will get what we're looking for so look I'm just gonna pump straight into this because there's no need to, to slow down from here on so I'm just gonna rub out the diagram straight away we don't need that anymore so we'll start with our u vast. So we have the x prime axis and the y prime axis. All right, so we have u v a s t, u v a s t. So we had u cos 30. So the cos of 30 is root 3 over 2. The sine of 30. It's a half. All right. The cos, or excuse me, the sine of. All right. Now we had the angle. It was tan inverse half. So let me look at this here. Now we have. Where are we gone? Question two. So tan inverse half. So we had one, two, and this is root five. All right. So and this was the the angle of inclination of the 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 actual the incline itself, which I'm going to call what beta. So it's going to be g times the sine of beta here, which is 1 over root 5. And it's going to be g times the cosine here, so it's g times 2 over root 5. And the signs are correct there. Alright, like I said, there's no need for me to slow down here. It's, it's a long enough question as it is. So the next thing we need to do is find the, uh, the time at which we're hitting the ground. So we need to find the time at which s sub y is equal to 0. So s of y is ut plus a half at squared. So it's u, uh, ut over 2, plus a half, so that's, with this 2 would cancel, so it's g over root 5, t squared. Now is that correct? ut plus a half g t squared. Yeah, that's correct. So s of y equals 0 is equal to ut over 2, plus g over root 5, t squared. So this is a quadratic, so we're just going to take out t. That's the way we solve these types of quadratics. So u over 2 plus g over root 5 times t. 
and that's equal to zero. So where you have two things multiplied together to get zero, one of them necessarily must be zero. That's t is equal to zero here. And then we'll get, we rearrange this root five, well, negative root five times u over two g is equal to t. And of course that is a positive number because g is a negative number. So that's looking good. So at the time, t is equal to minus root five u over two g, the particle has finished its motion is now back on the ground. So what we need to do is find the two velocity, the full velocity vector. So v sub x and v sub y and uh, see, see what we get. So this is v sub y, v sub x. So v is equal to u plus a t. All right. So, so it's equal to root three u over two, that's u plus g t over root five. And here it's u over two ut plus a half eight or ut plus a half at squared v equals u plus excuse me v equals u plus a t u plus a t so that's two g t over root five all right so let's just plug in our time value here into both of those and see what we get so v sub x is equal to root three u over two times uh, g which is, oh, plus, excuse me, plus g over root 5 times a negative number, so this becomes negative root 5 u over 2g. So let's take out a different color now. The g's will cancel, so all the root 5's, and we get root 3 u over 2 minus u over 2. So if we take out u over 2 here, we're going to get root 3 minus 1. That's equal to v sub x. So I'm just going to note that up here. Alright, so that was reasonably straightforward. So we'll do the exact same thing with v sub y. Excuse the red marker, it's, a, it's kind of a pain. So v sub y is equal to u over 2 plus 2g over root 5 times this number here well that clearly is a negative number all right sorry you can see there right negative number times root 5 over 2g times u so just once again change the color so we cancel the root 5s cancel the 2g's here like that that's quite convenient and we're going to get u over 2 minus u so we're going to get negative u over 2 is that right it is now the question is, does that make sense? Well, yes, it does, because it should be on the downward direction, so that actually makes perfect sense. So what we have is as follows. We have v is equal to v sub x i hat plus v sub y g hat. And v is equal to u over 2 root 3 minus 1 i hat minus u over 2 j hat. All right? So it's time to suppose, I, I think, to look at a diagram. So if this is our incline, and this is the angle, or this is the, we'll say, this is this vector here. And we have, there's the horizontal there, right? We know, uh, do we know, well, it's not that, actually. It's, that's the wrong way, I suppose. So it's like this. Right. We have the resultant vector. This is v sub x. This is v sub y. We have this angle here, I'm going to call that, what I'm going to call it, I'm lost for letters, I'm going to call it A because I'm just having a small bit of a, a, a lapse here, and this is going to call this B, alright? And we knew this here was equal to alpha, which we know. So, if we use tan, v sub x, we, if we inverse tan, opposite over adjacent, v sub x over v sub y will get A. All right. If we have a, we have b, and b is greater. Uh, b is greater than it would be hitting the x-axis by alpha degrees. So let's just do that. So tan inverse. So we need the tan inverse opposite over adjacent. So it's v sub x, which is u over two times root three minus one over. Uh, u over 2. So turn it upside down and multiply. 
like that. Just be careful with your algebra and it'll be just fine. Those two cancel, of course. And we get inverse tan root 3 minus 1. So pull out the calculator. It's the square root of 3 minus 1. Inverse tan like that. Get an answer of 36.2 degrees. Alright. So we have that A is equal to 36 degrees. So 36 plus 90, and take that away from 180, will give you what beta or B is equal to. So B is equal to 50, uh, approximately 54 degrees. And now the last thing we need to do is find out what alpha is. So we're told tan, uh, tan inverse alpha is half. So shift tan. 1 over 2, and we're told we give we get then that alpha is equal to 26 degrees. So the only difference between B hitting the X prime axis and hitting the X is it is greater by 26 degrees. So if you imagine grabbing this vector here and kind of turning it, you can see the angle who which it's hitting the hitting the plane is less sharp. Alright? So for that reason, if we take 26 from 54, we should have the answer we're looking for. So 54, excuse me, minus our answer gives me 27.43 degrees. So if it was hitting down here, it would be 27 degrees. Now, find the tan of the angle. So we need to, oh, we need to find the tan of that. So just tan that angle, and we get 0.51 meets the plane at landing. Find the tan of the angle with which the particle meets the plane. So I'm not too sure actually, are we looking for this one down here or B? We'll just see what, we'll see what we have at the back of the book. We're doing okay though, we're doing okay. So 3D question 2. So is one, the answer is, so the tan is equal to, just one sec now, I need to work out what this is. 1 divided by the square root of 3 minus 1 and inverse tan that, 53 degrees, yeah, so 53.79, so 54 degrees, yeah, so we got that, we, uh, we were trying to work out B, and in actual fact I thought we were trying to work out this angle down here, but that's, that's beside the point, so we have B, and it's 54 degrees, so thanks for watching, please pass it on to your friends, and subscribe to my channel.